All right, folks, listen, I'm back at it again. Check this out. Listen, I got a side dish. I'm going to say Gouda. Got you. Listen, I know y'all looking at this. You seen the thumbnail. You seen it in the tray. You know what we're about to do. We're about to do a smoked mac and cheese. And guess what? I'm going to level it up to show you how I make myself a smoked mac and cheese, you know, burger. Hey, with that being said, we finna get it. All right, so look, I'm going to be using my Rectech grill, right? You guys by now should know that, man, I love everything about them. You know what I mean? That's why I share all of the information with you, right? So I just hit power. This has got a dual zone. So look, I'm going to reduce this down to 250. Oh, I passed it up. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to put some smoke infused, you know, flavor into these mac and cheese. And I promise you this right here is going to be fire. Now, look, we finna go ahead and go through these pellets, right? I'm going to show you guys these right here. Look at this. These are pellets. Oh, this is a perfect one for me to talk about, right? But this is what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it's kind of like shiny or whatever. That's no chemical. It's just that compression, that tight, you know, mm, right? That just makes this form. Now, when you have all of your, your white oak, your red oak, your hickory and all of that, it produces, when they cut them down, it produces a little bit of dust. This is everything put together, compressed, and that's how you get to blend. Now, if you want to know what the bag looks like, this is what it looked like right here. Look, it's the Ultimate Blend Premium Hardwood Pellet, right? Again, look, 100% natural, white oak, red oak and hickory. I love this flavor right here. Now, coming back to my Rectech, check it out. Look at that right there. This is how it is when it first, you know, lights up, you get that dirty smoke coming out of there. I call it dirty smoke. Everybody probably calls it that, but it's gonna clean up, give you that blue translucent, you know, smoke right there, and that's what we waiting on. All right, so looking at this right here, you can see that it has already cleared up. I don't know if it's catching that little wave or whatever. I'm trying to stand in front of it. Maybe you can see the little waves or whatever, but that right there, it does it. Listen, and let me clear up everything. When you guys ask these questions like, do you get a smoke ring using a uh, pellet grill? Yes, you do. And what's my tool of choice? Rectech, folks. All right, so right now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm gonna go ahead and shred my cheese. Once you shred your cheese, we didn't already made our pasta. It's already done al dente, right? Here it is right here. You know what I mean? Uh, once we do that, then it grows really, really fast. Yeah, I don't know. You guys don't know this already, but my uh, my grill is already up to temp and waiting on me. So, so look, now I'm just finna go ahead and shred. And then when it's a little bit on the warm side too, listen, it shreds so nice, nice and easy. All right, so look, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna take a couple of cups Right, let me get this open. We're gonna put a couple of cups of the heavy whipping cream and then we're gonna do the whole milk. We wanna warm it, right? That's gonna be key, folks. We don't wanna work with nothing cold. And then what we do is we just pour it right on in here, right here. Look, we don't wanna heat it up or nothing like that. We don't wanna like cook it and get it to boil. We just wanna warm it up. You want it to be warm. And then our whole milk. Now remember, I said you don't want to like heat it up. Those of you guys know, like even making hot chocolate, if you put too much heat on this, it start getting all ugly and nasty and curd and all of that. AB, look, take this, put that over there on that side of the grill. And then now what we're getting ready to do is I'm gonna spray my pan, right? So yes, yeah, he does that. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna take my nine stick spray, which happens to be, you know, this right here. And you guys can see it's olive oil, right? So let me just, I like to do this because I don't want nothing to stick, right? So we just put this in here like that and just let it be, right? Next, hand me up. I'm gonna take this, bring this over here, start getting some fire. Now we getting ready to melt our butter and make our roux. All right, so let me go ahead. You can see it's a nice warm day. Don't forget, I'm out here in Vegas. Don't let nobody tell you it don't be hot, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just melt this stick of butter right here. All right, so once it's melted, as you guys can see, like this, look, it's the same way we make a roux, right? I'm gonna go ahead and start just sprinkling a little bit in here. Now I told you, being honest with you, like when I have other chefs here, like we didn't have some big name chefs here on the channel. They always tell me, why do I, they ask me, why do I do that? I'm putting a little bit at a time, because they say when it comes to this flour, just put it all in. But for me, I like to do it and incorporate it in slowly, you know? So I'll probably do a half, you know, one time and the other half the second time. So what I want to do is I want to cook some of that flour taste out, right? So we got a little heat on the bottom of this and look at that right there. And listen, I got a pan that's big enough, right? Big enough that we don't have to worry about it. 
You know, everything being on there, look how it's spreading. That's what I like to see. All right, so I don't know. Let me move this so you guys can see. It's cooking up just nice. I'm not trying to get it too dark. I, I said make a roux, but we ain't making gumbo, right? Now we right. AB, do me a favor. Bring me the warm milk. And I want you to, hey, matter of fact, bro, I want you to do me a favor, man. Around this food, man, put on the apron, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so look. Now, I want you to go ahead. It's gonna be tricky. Pour a little bit of this inside of here. Come on, just a little bit. Make sure it don't backsplash. Come on. There you go. Come on, man. There we go. There we go. Now, you guys see it like this? We just want to go ahead and get this going. You can dump it all now. There we go. We don't have no lumps. See, when you do it the right way, hey, y'all, I got to get this cat. Hey, get, get your apron, man. This is what I'm up against, y'all. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to let this, you know, we're probably going to do this and stir this for about four or five minutes. You just want to make sure everything is incorporated. But like I said, I didn't have no lumps. You can see it's a little bit of a thick side, but just you wait, because we're going to flavor it, add that cheese, and we're going to make a sauce, folks. All right. So listen, you guys look right here. You can see it's starting to begin to just show its thickness, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and just add, you know, my spices, right? So I'll just add these in like that. Aaron, go ahead and put that in there. You know what I mean? And uh, let me ask you this. Did you ever go and get that, uh, the salt? Yeah, can you get the uh, salt for me, please? Yeah, thank you. Then we're going to hit it with just a little bit of salt. Now, listen, this is the key. Same thing we do with any roux. The key is really in your wrist, your elbow, and your hand, right? Oh, a little bit in your shoulder, too. You want to keep it moving. You don't want it to, like, just stay stagnant because it'll start to thicken up and, like, lump. You know what I mean? Uh, but anything that you see in here that look halfway lumpy, the only reason you're seeing that is because that's probably trying to form a bubble. You know what I mean? But this is what we want. And I want to stay on my heat, so I'm going to reduce my heat a little bit. Now we're coming up on the sauce, folks. All right, put two pinches of salt in here for me. All right, so look, you guys can see, I never stop doing this right here. I keep turning, you know what I mean? Keep whisking, you know what I mean? The mixing, and this is what I like to see, right? Now, earlier we went ahead and grind, uh, grated up three types of cheeses. So, A.B., I'm going to have you... Uh, just go ahead and put a little bit of that in there. You know what I mean? We'll start, look, just that Monterey. The key is, listen, I'm going to keep it going. And we're going to use the heat, you know what I mean, uh, just to go ahead and get it to melt. Now, I got the heat on very, very low, right? Like, low, low. You know what I mean? Uh, if it's not melting away, I checked it down. Look at that. You see how it's kind of like disappearing? Now we're making a cheese sauce, folks. Go ahead and add some more. And that'll probably be what we add right there. You know what I mean? Ooh, look at that. Now we finna come with that smoked Gouda. You can see it how it's starting to, uh-huh. Now, when I see it starting to do that right there, I can turn it off. I turn my fire off, and we are gonna let the residual heat go ahead and melt it. Until it stops melting, then that's when I go ahead and put it back on low, right? So, we just leave it like this. Just keep going. I wanna see that disappear. All right, go ahead and add a little bit more. Now I like to reserve a little back because we're gonna put some on top of there as we put it inside of the smoker, right? And then as it's in the smoker, I'm gonna explain to you guys why I don't like to make dishes like this on my, you know, on any other type of grill, especially my charcoal grill because it's only so big and I'll explain why. Okay, folks, so it should look like that. And listen, I'm telling you right now, it's so hot out here. Listen, dealing with this uh, this this cheese, it look like it's trying to melt on this own and we ain't even done that, right? So you want to set your smoker. Remember, the key is 250 degrees, right? We don't cover it, right? The reason we don't cover it is because we trying to infuse it with that, you know, with that smoke, right? So hands down, put it in there, set yourself a timer for 45 minutes, and then we're going to come out back out here and look at it. Okay, folks, look, it's been 45 minutes, right? We're going to take our first peek at it. It depends on where you at, elevation, I guess, and all of that, because sometimes it takes 
50 minutes, it could take one hour, but 45 minutes, I'm saying that just in case I gotta go back. Here we go. Ah, no sir. I can look at that right there and tell you, look at that, how that cheese melted on the top. Now you know it's been in there with them, you know, with that with that, that, that special blend of, them blend of those pellets. Look at that. All right, go on and take them out, man. Aye, look at that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my pellet grill. I'm gonna let this cool. You know what I mean? And uh, reason being, cause I'm finna put this on top of, check this out, on top of a cheeseburger. And we finna have a mac and, you know, mac and cheese cheeseburger. Okay, folks, so look. You saw that like it'll, it'll do the cheese pool and all of that. But listen, I told you I'm gonna be putting this on top of these cheese, you know, on top of these uh, cheesy patties, right? So as you can see, they got the crust on there. So what they tell you, I mean, I must have had made some type of smash, right? So with that being said, I'm finna go in here. You know what I mean? Uh, we finna get it. Come on, baby. Mm. Let's get all of this, right? Sorry, y'all. Look, it ain't that often I gotta say sorry for putting some creamy, you know what I mean, uh, mac and cheese on something, you know what I mean? But anyway, I don't wanna make it too big because it'd be, that's my problem. I try to overdo it, right? So we'll just put it on like this. And that right there is gonna be my lunch, folks. Okay, folks, you just seen it. Listen, if you're looking for a, a cheesy mac and cheese and then you wanted to take it over the top by infusing it with that, you know, that smoky flavor, this is it right here. Listen, I'm not finna over talk it or nothing like that. I'm starving, y'all. We about to eat. Cheers, y'all. Hey, listen, folks, I'm gonna wrap this one up real quick, right? I ain't already took pictures and all of that, but the main thing is I gotta eat, man. And I tell you, I'm starving. Listen, this is over the top. I, I should have said this, like as soon as you put your mouth over the top of it and you kind of like inhale, I don't know how else how to say it, you could taste the smokiness from it right there. Now, you guys let me know what you think about the seasoning and I really want to know what would you guys do to like level it up when you get it on your end. Don't forget it's on my website, smokingandgrillingwithab.com and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. And you know what? Stick around. After you look at this one right here, stick around, look at the other recipes we have. I got a lot of suggestions for you, you know what I mean? I'm going to get you through this summer and we finna make it happen. With that being said, I got to cut this off because I got to eat. And check it out, folks. I'm out. Peace.